G'day, I'm Toady, uh, and today we are going to be doing a showcase of the first of, hopefully two, uh, major content updates for Nation Independent Arsenal and I Arms um, for 2021. Uh, as a uh, full warning ahead of time, uh, please be advised that still very much work in progress, so uh, there's a chance you might see uh, errors or uh, music content, just you know, please bear in mind that this is not the final product. Um, with that out of the way, uh, let's uh, get into the new content. So, biggest one first, uh, let's talk about the uh, Examates. Now, the Examates, if you're not a big, uh, if you're not super huge rifle history nerds, uh, HK developed the Examate at the behest of the United States Department of Defense. Uh, it was designed to be a uh, M4 or M16 uh, family replacement for the United States military. It was designed to uh, coalesce the entire military into uh, one basic uh, overall form factor and pattern. Um, this program came out of the Future Warrior or Future Soldier program. Uh, this got far, but this got far further ahead than anything else that that program ever uh, developed. Uh, to the point that uh, these were officially, semi-officially, uh, put through troop trials uh, in both uh, both in the US and uh, overseas in Iraq. Um, unfortunately, the program never you know, fully took off and the adoption obviously never went through. But, uh, you know, uh, such as is, such is development programs, unfortunately. Um, so, NIRs will be covering the... Basic, uh, basically, its entire practical functioning life, um, from its initial uh, initial prototyping phase, uh, initial uh, functional prototyping phase, which, uh, as we can see here in front of us on the table, um, is coming in uh, coming in green and uh, olive drab. Um, so the original package for the XMA uh, came with an integrated uh, unremovable uh, red dot, as you can see here. Uh, and no iron sights. Uh, eventually, they switched over uh, with some feedback from the military to the program to the one that was ultimately trialed with the uh, army, I believe, um, which was uh, which included backup iron sights, a removable red dot, which could be uh, replaced with a, a another uh, other scope options if necessary, or you know removed entirely. Um, and then we have five, have the final one, uh, which I'm choosing to adapt uh, to uh, uh, replicate here, which is the uh, MWSF uh, entry. That uh, it really was the final major significant uh, version of the XM8. There was one after this, which was adopted for what became after the, which what came of the uh, MWSF trial, which was the SCAR trial, um, but the changes are very minor and uh, ultimately there were very few exit mates that that particular brand really ever made. Um, so, um, so the exit mate, uh, as it was designed to re replace pretty much uh, most of the small arms in the army, uh, covers a whole slew of roles and these are all replicated in any arms. So we have the carbine, we have the uh, Grenadier carbine here with the XM320. Uh, we have the subcompact, which is designed for, you know, rear, rear echelon troops or special forces, depending on who's asking. And then we have the designated marksman and light support role, uh, the, the, the AR role. Um, technically, uh, the DM and AR versions were uh, given separate barrels, different for obviously different functioning roles, but uh, outside of the foregrip, you don't really see it. So in, in NI Arms, they, it, both of those roles are rolled into just one platform uh, of variant. So on top of that, uh, we are on top of those four uh, key roles and there's uh, three significant iterations. Uh, we are also covering a variety of uh, finishes, uh, including the original uh, 
green and uh, green and olive drab of the uh, prototypes. Um, the black of what was to become the trials rifles, um, as well as a tan for the purposes of just completion, the completeness sake. Uh, I have seen uh, some of the accessories came in the color, um, even if they never showed up. Uh, it is worth pointing out that for accuracy's sake, really after the uh, initial prototype phase, uh, the exomates were only really ever seen in black. However, each of the iterations of the plat platform have all four colors. Uh, so, this brings us up to, this brings the count of like practical weapons uh, that are being introduced with just the exomates here to about 50. Uh, oh, and there are two custom uh, fun skins. Uh, we have the shark nosed uh, designated uh, designated marksman AR roll uh, variant there, and the hand painted uh, e e carbine bass. And, uh, yeah. So that is 50 rifles, 50 weapons, uh, practical weapons total. Uh, on top of that, uh, there are five. Oh, no. There are. Uh, da, 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 da. Did the math here. Uh, seven optics. Uh, four of those are just color variants of one of them uh, to make up for the prototype version. Um, there are uh, five side or bottom uh, mounted accessories, um, including a flashlight there. Um, and four grips, as you can see there also. So uh, let's have a look at this from fir uh, from first person because I want to show off some of the other extra uh, party tricks. <laughs> See what I mean about errors. Um, okay, so let's pick up a. Da -da 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 -da. Let's pick up. Let's make carbine set. Baseline rifle here. So what we have here is the standard uh, baseline rifle. It is, but it comes equipped by default uh, with a uh, Insight ISM IR uh, red dot. Uh, the red dots and uh, the the optics of the uh, Exomates uh, have an interesting part trick. Uh, in real life. Uh, both the Insight uh, ISMs and the Insight Accu uh, Advanced Marksman Optic, the AMO, the, the Designated Marksman uh, Optic, which I will grab a additional uh, additional copy of here. Uh, so... In real life, the Exomates, the Exomate sites uh, had an interesting party trick. Because these were designed to be the future of uh, weapons, what they wanted to do is they wanted to get rid of the ne the need to have a secondary laser uh, laser optic, uh, laser aiming device or something like that for night combat. What they wanted was a easy all-in-one solution that you didn't have to additionally like uh, zero depending on you know uh, your your setup. You you zero your red dot and you're done basically um and to do that they rolled the uh the laser aiming module into the red dot optic um, this was not quite ready for the original prototypes uh so the uh prototype uh, red dots do not have this function but both the amo and the xm uh, the ism do and to demonstrate one of my favorite little uh tricks that was developed that I developed uh, for the Exonates. Uh, I'm going to need some night vision as well, just to show that it's actually working. Jeans, night vision goggles. Beautiful. So, uh, as we can see, we've got an Insight ISM IR on here. Uh, as by default, uh, it will be also including a integrated laser. Because of the way armor works, uh, this is 
the integrated laser can't be just mounted as part of the uh, optical attachment. It has to be a, a separate a separate a separate item, basically. And uh, for a while, I was you know going over how to properly implement it. So you know, depending on whether you had this the optics available to you, the the optics mounted or not, you had the laser option. And uh, the the nice solution I came up with was ultimately scripted and uh, it works quite well. So if I take the ISM off here. You'll notice it takes the uh, integrated laser with it. And as soon as I put the ISM back, the integrated laser returns. Um, for the sake of uh, not overriding any other function uh, that may or may not exist, uh, if you have a secondary attachment like this uh, weapon light attached to an XM8, uh, what happens when you attach a an optic is it does not include the laser because uh, that would be uh, you know it would be uh, antithetical to to purpose. It would be it would be bad design. Uh, so to show that this how this works, let's just make it nighttime. Put night vision on. So as you can see, we're using the flashlight. And if we take the flashlight off, instantly, instantly you get the laser, and that is exactly how I wanted it to work. And I'm actually really pleased with the uh, really pleased with the implementation. It was a, uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm really I'm really pleased with it, and uh, as mentioned, this all this function also works with the AMO. AMO also has a laser sight, uh, laser aiming laser aiming module. Uh, all right, let's turn it back to daytime. Uh, another script that was developed specifically as part of uh, as, as specifically as part of the XMH project, but uh, not necessarily limited in scope to the the XMHs, was the ability to add vertical floor grips to weapons. Um, this is a thing that if you've used RHS, you already know about, but to implement the function func functionality of that, I wanted something that was a bit uh did something similar but without you know needing rhs so i developed that i'll just i'll just i'll discuss it uh, in more depth later but the general gist is uh if you put a foregrip on you get a foregrip and you get a very minor uh buff to uh stability and uh, recoil control um and as the final uh i guess feature of the xmates is uh, the uh, scripted optic with the AMO here. Um, I'll also go into this in later de in detail later because this was part of an uh, ongoing project uh, to update the scopes within NI Arms. But uh, the XMates were the first ones to get uh, get this fully implemented um, as standard, um, and as you can see with the uh, Excuse me. Um, as you can see with the AMO here, you get a uh, dynamic and very accurate uh, ACOG-like BDC. It's bang on the money for uh, uh, what I could find about the reticle, and it pretty much holds accurate. It pretty much holds true. Uh, okay. That it for... I believe that's it for the XMates for the moment. Um, I need to have some more water. Right. Okay, so next weapon. Uh, let's next update here. Let's talk about the Johnson Automatic Rifle of model, model of 1941. Now, again, a quick blurb on the Johnson. The Johnson 1941, uh, automatic rifle 
was the it was the brainchild of Melvin Johnson, uh, much like his uh, much like his uh, 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 infantry rifle, the uh, mod also the model of 1941 developed these in tandem. Um, it is a short recoil based uh, rotating bolt uh, weapon. It feeds uh, as opposed to the uh, the infantry rifle. This feeds from a twenty round uh, single stack magazine on the right hand side, but it can also stack, uh, feed from uh, uh, five rounds uh, uh, Springfield clips. Um, unfortunately, that it, the the functionality that really makes the the, the, the stripper clips worth it, uh, which is the ability to load an additional five rounds into the gun. Um, I wasn't able to replicate. Um, if I ever find a way that works, I will uh, back update it. But uh, until then, uh, it is a twenty-round automatic rifle, much si similar to the Bar, um, and there are uh, there is really only one of them. Um, so what we'll do is we will <clears throat> grab ourselves one from the arsenal. So we have one here. So, as you can see, uh, this is a Johnson light uh, automatic rifle or light machine gun, depending on who you're asking. I'm quite finished with it, quite uh, pleased with the finish of it. Um, I'm gonna look at its reload animation here. So one of the other interesting things about the Johnson automatic rifle, as opposed to the uh, the infantry rifle, is that it has uh, it has uh, in full automatic in full auto fully automatic mode the bolt. Open, uh, fires from an open bolt position, and uh, when it is closed, it is a closed bolt weapon. And uh, you can see that functionality is replicated perfectly. Um, let's uh, let's put it in slow mo. Uh, as a bit of a heads up, uh, you will get a small preview of another update to NI Arms as part of this. Just Listen with your ears. And you can see the uh, extractor also shifting as you fire as well, because that's the thing it does. It has a bipod, non-detachable, and it zeroes all the way out to a thousand meters. Okay, uh, so with that out of the way, um, oh, uh, the Johnson automatic rifle comes with one rifle, two magazines of 30 odd six, uh, standard ball and tracer. Um, yeah. So, uh, now we're moving on to more generalized NI arms, uh, updates and fixes. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to go over like individually the minutiae of them, but talk, let's talk about large chunks here. So the first one, as you may have clued in with the Johnson, the Johnson automatic rifle, there, um, something's up with that sound effect, the the, the gunshots there, right? And that is because uh, Jarhead of JSRS and also Song Prairie Fire uh, has done a significant uh, gunshot audio overhaul for NI arms and uh, that is coming as part of the update uh, it is also implemented from uh, at the base level on both the XM8 and the Johnson and going forward 
you know, and that, that is the plan. Um, that is how gunshots are going to sound. Um, so, it's not quite apparent with the Johnson, um, but if we get out another XM8, Grab a couple of magazines. Somewhere down here. So the the XM8 uses uses the same uh, audio as a G36. And if you use if you've used the G36 in eight arms, you already know what that sounds like. This is what they sound like now. Get ourselves another magazine, I think. And, uh, of course, this doesn't just extend to, like, exterior audio. It extends to, uh, interior audio as well. Uh, let's just sneak in here. And, uh, yeah. With different, with different weapons, it sounds, you know, different. And uh, just to really hammer down how much of a difference the audio makes, let's get something a little bit more hefty. That's the the MGs are the ones that really uh, show off the proof of concept, um, but of course, uh, you know, this isn't just uh, close range and interiors. This also extends to like distant audio. And if we get on this dirt bike, uh, quad bike, go out to the range, uh, we'll do a little bit, a little bit of a distant uh, audio showcase. Right, so out oh. mm. frame things. Okay, so out in the uh, background there, uh, I have set two uh, opposing forces uh, ready to go, engage in combat, and give us a good idea of what uh, m combat will sound like. Um, as a full disclosure, I am also running actual JSRS on this, so. Things like uh, explosions, ricochets, that sort of thing. That stuff is uh, very much JSRS and not included with NA arms. Just bear that in mind as we get into this. Yeah. 
So the fi the team on the left here are firing AK-12s and M60s. The team on the right are firing XM8s and uh, Mark 48s. Oh, that's too close. Well, let's leave them to their uh, devices for the moment. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure they won't come into the camp and uh, assassinate me. And let's head back and continue doing updates. So, the uh, next thing, as alluded to uh, with the SMAs, is the floor grips. Uh, these are now successfully rolled out across all the unarmed weapons. Uh, the system is uh, far more extensible than the, the system that was found in uh, uh, RHS, where RHS is very much limited to the three uh, like hand grips per se that uh, it was expecting. This system allows you to basically use like meta keywords, and at the moment, at the moment I'm implemented. I've implemented three, but there's you know sky's the limit on this. It's keyword. It's keyword based. Um, also, of course, because NI Arms is uh, releases sources and is on GitHub, uh, this source will be available for adaptation to other mods. CBA, if they want to expand and make it ex make a proper extensible uh, version of it. Um, it's very, very what you would expect. So, uh, let's just get this on the ground, get the M4, and let's get ourselves a... Let me use the arsenal, please. Thank you. Uh, did I rifle. Let's get a rifle. So let's put a vertical foregrip on it. Um, as you can see, weapon updates. It's it's really quite self-explanatory. Um, this is this uh this this uh attachment system is uh created. It, it is uh what is uh made by making multiple uh, triplicates of weapons with the different uh, with the different handholds in uh, the configs and basically switching through them in su switching to them invisibly so um, this is a different weapon technically to this one it would help if I actually took it off thank you and of course uh, you know JSRS uh, jarhead sounds. My apologies. Um, and yes, the, these have been rolled out uh, across the entire NI arms. I have uh, 
set up all the weapons that need them on their underside uh, rails. Um, so it just works. Um, and yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Next. Uh, next uh, uh, update uh, feature is uh, rail groups. Uh, uh, rail covers. Sorry. Um, so these were originally going to be part of the SCAR release, and the SCARs were actually going to come first, um, but that's not how it worked out, and eventually I had all these rolled into the uh, core of NI Arms, and I hadn't finished the SCARs. So I finished off these beforehand, and these are now just part of it. So every weapon that has uh, side rails now has the ability to mount a uh, selection of rail covers. Uh, let's zoom in on our dude here. So as you can see, by default, the M4 comes with its uh, Knight's uh, carbine panels. Um, but it can be, uh, it can mount a selection of new ones. So we have uh, things like the uh, Magpul or, you know, generic ladder covers uh, in uh, four colors. You can uh, customize these to your desire. Um, I will only be including uh, four primary uh, like weapon colors plus uh, a pride uh, set. Um, because the reason why I'm not doing any more than that is because this has an exponentially large amount of um, both configs and uh, models. Uh, both configs and models and I it's a lot of work. I, I for very little like uh, payoff. So I'm doing, you know, the the four things you the four colors you really want, which is black, desert, green, and olive drab. But we have ladder covers in uh, short, medium, long forms. We have Magpul XTs, which look like uh, the knights uh, rail covers uh, in a variety of colors. Uh, we have. XDMEs in singles and couples and uh, sets of four in all four. And uh, as you can see with the uh, SAMA, the SAM, the uh, Rock River Arsenal one, uh, I have replaced the, the, excuse me again, uh, default of the, the stock. Uh, inbuilt uh, rail covers with uh, new XTMEs, and I have to say, very proud of how the XTMEs turned out specifically. Um, they do look quite nice, quite fetching. Uh, yeah. Uh, and oh boy, we're going through it a clip here. Uh, let's see. Next one, uh, scripted optics. So, uh, as alluded to with the, again, in the XM8 pack, um, I'm making a big transition to unify all the uh, 2D optics. That is to say, you know, think of them as the, the ones that have the static crosshairs on the screen. They're not a 3D built into a model type scopes. Um, I'm, set, I'm, I'm unifying on having them wherever possible uh, unified on the, the CBA uh, scripted optic system, which gives uh, gives a lot of control over like how reticles are properly scaled and things. It it's a much more configurable and uh, but frankly better better UA better better uh, end user experience than um, what you would expect before. So uh, there are really only a couple of exceptions where like weapon scope functionality kind of clashes with it. Um, but for the most part, uh, what we're seeing is something like, say he hello to the Styrog here. Uh, say hello to the Styrog's now new default two-dimensional optic. And as you can see, it looks a lot better and it looks a lot more usable. Same magnification, same fundamental crosshair, um, same FOV, it's, you know, the, the the org optic is pretty terrible for a, for an FOV, but um, 
it's much more responsive. It feels like it's attached to a person. It, it feels like the rifle is actually attached to a person and not just a, a, a HUD element, for better description. Um, and of course, you have the backup site. It switches to that, no problem. Um, this whole program was started after uh, I, was get, I was donated the uh, Night, Force, Night Force Attacker. And uh, to get that to properly function um, was the real was real, the real push into showing what this this system could do, uh, and because I was really really quite surprised and impressed with it, um, yeah, I wanted to do right um, by all the other scopes in in NARs. So you can expect this level of uh, yeah attention to detail in all of the optics. Um, so let's get. Oh, let me take the AK. Please let me take the AK. Thank you. So, you know, let's... Let's put a proper PSO1 on here, for example. New PSO object, as you can see, the giant rubber eye cap basically cuts out your uh, exterior vision, very much like the real thing. Um, and... It's not actually updated in this, so I'm just going to show I'll show it off independently. Uh, that's what I wanted. Yeah. It also comes with a night reticle. Um, eventually, this will be uh, a toggleable thing, but uh, in this current version, it's only uh, detects when you're at night when it's night time. Oh, oh, that was that was awful. Um, you know what, let's uh, let's prove it on one more weapon here. Let me take the G three. No, all right. Well, switch to that. So we got a we got an FR audience uh, FR ordnance uh, MC fifty one. Um, basically the G3 MP5, um, similar deal. Uh, let's just have a look at why is it not showing any scope options for that. Specifically asked you to not do that. Hmm. Okay, well, we're just you're just gonna have to take my word for it at the moment. Then, uh, all the optics have that. It's I'm really quite pleased with how they look. I spent a lot of time trying to get the correct uh, scope body uh, being represented, and you know, as much as much as accurate as much as accurately possible the uh, FOV, etc., uh, etc. Et um, yeah. So uh, moving on to, uh, oh. Why has it disappeared? There should be a box there. The box is gone. I'm going to have to restart the mission. Not sure what's happened there. My apologies. This was supposed to be a one and done kind of deal. <laughs> As you can see, it has not turned into that. Oh, it's on fire. Okay. Well, I guess everybody gets to look at me make an editor fix. Yeah, why are you in the floor? Damn, girl, you really live like this? And uh, before we actually pick up the we the weapon, I just want to show off uh, all the uh, all the weapon crates uh, under NI arms are now being unified with this nice new uh, retection supply crate. Um, I did this because, frankly, it was a bit of a mess, and I want to give it a bit of visual identity. 
they look nice. They work. You can see what you can see exactly what they got inside them on the side there. Right, so let's get ourselves a Sturmgewehr 57. Let's get some magazines for it. Let's drop the G3 wannabe on the ground. And let's go back out to the rifle range. So, as we're driving over there, um, this next update comes as a... Uh, comes via a donation via uh, Tapache Loco of Spearpoint or uh, the Free World Arsenal, which is both exceptional mods, um, and I highly recommend them if uh, if you're looking for uh, more content for your armor. Um, but uh, yes, Tapacho Loco uh, sent over, kindly donated, um, a set of rifle grenades for the Sturmgewehr 57. Um, And I am going to demonstrate them because that's what we're here for. Uh, we have four different grenades here. Uh, we have the AP, that is uh, anti-personnel, AT, anti-tank, uh, smoke, and we have the uh, flying death carrot, the practice grenade. So, um, let's get into it. Actually, Let's look at the AT one first. I did not want that. Let's start. Let's start with the AP one because I'm going to be real. Once we've got onto the AT ones, you know, there's not going to be too many targets left. So, AP grenades work pretty much as you would expect. You line up the sight. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the plumb line and the lead weight. To, nor can I turn the gun sideways to get the proper like uh, drop thing off the bipod leg. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to do it off the iron sight and sheer uh, and sheer like eyeball again. For what it is worth, the the uh, grenades have been zeroed, so this these are accurate. So this is fifty meters. This is the anti personnel. Yeah, it's all right. Does decently enough. So there is a helicopter right there, which is hundred. I can see, uh, as you start getting up into the uh start getting up into the the armor ranges we'll find that the anti-personnel ones just really don't do a whole lot against these do i still have one left i do And of course, you can seat this thing all the way out to 300 meters, at which point it be, just basically becomes a very short range uh, IDF mortar uh, embedded with infantry troops. Um, but to me, the real party trick of the Sturmgruber 57's rifle grenades is the AT, because like, these things were basically designed as uh, infantry ready, infantry portable, infantry issuable even. Um, RPG rounds. And, uh, you know, let's have a look. That one's not too surprising. Let's show off the reload here while we're here as well. Hit it. Mm. 
Might have gone high? Maybe? Yeah, well... I think it did go high. Uh, let's get a few more of those out. Let's aim high on the plates. And we'll go for the one fifty. That one's less surprising. These are in fact a lot of fun to launch. Um, and yes, these will be coming to the uh, next update of NI Arts. Um, I do, I wouldn't mind doing some more rifle grenades, um, of course this is pending, you know, developing proper, uh, configs and, you know, meshes, animations, it's all, it all takes time, um, so don't be surprised if you see them, but, uh, don't hang around for them, unfortunately. But, uh, what we got is, yeah, stone gravers that can fire rifle grenades. So. It's a thing. Let's see. What else am I getting? Oh, that was good. Okay. Uh, okay, so one of our last minor, um, last minor kind of, uh, updates uh aside from all these big system changes is uh i've been going through and i'll be doing some uh refactoring of uh, various uh materials and trying to get their look to you know be a bit nicer you can see it a little bit in the uh, storm cover 57 but it's more apparent on say Come on, please let me pick the G3 up. Please let me to pick the G3. Yeah, it will not. Okay. Right, let's take the 416 then. There we go. There we go. It's more apparent here on the G3s. Like, the, the G3s are the one where I think it was most apparent that the materials were kind of a little bit off. Um, but I've been going through and I'll be doing some fine tuning of them and with the help of, uh, like, uh, using the world environment maps, world env maps, uh, correctly, or at least in a, a better way, um, you can see you're getting much more, you know, true to life or true to what you'd expect, um, sort of, sort of look out of it and it looks nice. And of course, new sounds. Um, and I guess that kind of, that's kind of it. Um, thank you all for, you know, sitting through and listening to me explain the things that you can be expecting. Uh, this update is, I, I am looking to drop, uh, once I've done some final QA on it, um, within the next three weeks. Um, so that is to say, the the end of July, uh, at the very latest, August 10. And, uh, yeah. If you'd, like, want to keep abreast of uh, further NI Arms updates, uh, that sort of thing, you can check in on my Twitter. If you'd like to help me out with uh, um, 
with uh, working on these because uh, I don't know if you know this, but NA Arms is kind of my full time job, and uh, you know, any penny, any penny uh, you can throw at me any month is uh, another month that I can keep working on these and can keep I keep updating them and keep, of course, adding to them. Um, additionally, uh, I don't know how many people are aware, but I was one. I was the uh, lead animator on the. Uh, recently released a uh, CDLC, so Prairie Fire. Um, if you like my animations, if you like my work, go check that out. It's got a shitload of good stuff in it otherwise, and, uh, you know, honestly, um, I personally am really proud of my own work in it, but there is a lot to like about it. And, uh, yeah, that helped me out as well. Um, but until these release, and until I talk to you all next, uh, this is Toadie, uh, see you later.